Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Flectus channel. Submarines pose a serious threat to ships and land-based installations. With their ability to hide under the water, move undetected, and launch various deadly weapons. Submarines can destroy targets from hundreds of feet or thousands of miles away. To protect against these relatively recent threats, navies worldwide had to develop new tactics and strategies, collectively known as anti-submarine warfare. The goal of anti-submarine warfare, or ASW, is effectively detecting, tracking, and neutralizing enemy submarines before they can infiltrate friendly seas to perform espionage or strike at allied targets. As time has passed, navies have employed new and innovative technologies to assist in this process, including sonar, magnetic anomaly detectors, and advanced radar systems. If it's determined that neutralizing the sub is the best course of action, surface vessels and planes can utilize depth charges, torpedoes, or anti-submarine rockets to destroy their targets. That said, Submarines are by no means easy to engage. They too have advanced technology on their side, including sophisticated jamming equipment that can scramble enemy sensors. For this reason, one of the most important tools of modern anti-submarine warfare is the sono buoy. Put simply, sono buoys are floating sonar sensors that can be deployed from a ship or aircraft to extend the listening capabilities of ASW forces. Most models are buoyant and contain either passive or active listening devices similar to the sonar used aboard a surface vessel. However, because they are so small, it can be difficult for subs themselves to pick them up. Once deployed, the sono buoys immediately begin listening for underwater sounds, including the noise generated by the submarine's machinery, propellers, and other acoustic signatures. Some sono buoys can transmit real-time data back to the aircraft, allowing ASW operators to analyze the information and make tactical decisions on the spot. They are also often dropped in patterns or grids to establish an even more effective search area, essentially creating a wall of detection that maximizes the chances of establishing contact. Sono buoys are highly sophisticated pieces of equipment but they are also extremely versatile. If necessary, land troops can load them into helicopters or airplanes, fly over the water, and drop them out of the aircraft by hand. This can provide valuable support to troops and vehicles on land and in the water, particularly when specialized sono buoy equipped airplanes are not on hand.
That said, they do not provide permanent detection. Most sono buoys are designed to float on the surface for a limited time, after which they run out of power and must be retrieved. However, some advanced sono buoys are equipped with self-destruct mechanisms to prevent the capture of sensitive technology or data by adversaries. Whatever the case, sono buoys are a cost-effective and efficient means of extending the range and coverage of underwater surveillance, allowing ASW forces to detect, track, and, if needed, destroy submarines before they can complete their missions. Though most Navy vessels are armed, not all are properly equipped to take on a state-of-the-art submarine. Fortunately, even before the invention of the submarine, most navies employed a special class of ships called destroyers. These long endurance vessels are specifically designed to escort larger or less well-armed vessels, engaging any boat, aircraft, or submarine that might pose a threat. Their unique ability to engage and destroy submarines makes them a valuable asset to any fleet. However, the manner in which they do so varies dramatically depending on their equipment and the tactics employed. For starters, destroyers are equipped with advanced sonar systems, including hull-mounted and towed sonar arrays. These systems are used to detect and track submarines by sending out sound waves and listening to their echoes. By analyzing the return signals, the crew can determine the submarine's location, depth, and course. Once a submarine is identified, the destroyer can use several different weapons to target the underwater ship. For decades, one of the best options was depth charges. Special explosive devices designed to sink or damage submarines by detonating underwater at a predetermined depth. Though effective, depth charges are now considered a more haphazard approach to anti-submarine warfare. Today, improvements in torpedo technology make them the best option for destroyers to attack and destroy submarines. Though often associated with submarine attacks on surface vessels, the reverse is also true. This is because torpedoes are equipped with their own sonar guidance systems that allow them to home in on the submarine's acoustic signature, following its path, even if the target maneuvers. Once a submarine is detected and its position is known, the destroyer can launch a torpedo in the direction of the target, and the torpedo itself will do the rest. Modern torpedoes also boast an impressive range, sometimes as much as 40 kilometers. This means destroyers can launch torpedoes at a considerable distance from the target, allowing them to stay in a safer position while still posing a threat to the submarine.
Most destroyers are equipped with torpedo tubes that can launch torpedoes from both the surface and underwater. This enables them to engage submarines in various scenarios, including when they are close to the surface or submerged at greater depths. While submarines may be one of their primary targets, modern destroyers can engage a variety of targets, including those in the air, on the surface, and land hundreds of miles away. For instance, Navy destroyers are often equipped with a range of missile systems, including surface-to-air missiles, anti-ship munitions, and precision land attack cruise missiles, like the Tomahawk. Destroyers are equipped with various gun systems, including large-caliber anti-ship cannons and specialized close-in weapon systems, like the Phalanx or RAM, which provide close-range defense against incoming missiles and aircraft. Finally, most destroyers carry some form of electronic warfare suite to detect, jam, and counter enemy radar communications, and missile guidance systems, as well as countermeasures to protect them from attack. Such defenses are critical, as submarines are also heavily armed with a wide range of powerful weapons. And because they can use their stealth to infiltrate enemy territory, sub-attacks can be extremely hard to detect and defend against. Like their destroyer adversaries, submarines often carry a battery of torpedoes that they can fire from under the water while remaining largely undetected. Depending on their design and designation, Subs will often carry land attack cruise missiles and anti-ship cruise missiles to engage targets on land and sea. Among the most powerful weapons in the submarine arsenal are sea-based intercontinental ballistic missiles, such as Russia's Bulava and the United States Trident II D-5. These missiles are capable of carrying nuclear warheads, which make them a critical component of each nation's nuclear deterrent strategy. Thanks to highly innovative, specially designed launch systems, submarines are actually capable of firing missiles, including ICBMs, while fully submerged. There are actually two primary types of launch systems used on submarines, vertical launch systems and torpedo tube launch systems. Vertical launch systems are the most common method for firing missiles, especially the larger varieties. As the name implies, this process utilizes vertical launch tubes. When the decision to launch is made, the tube's cover or door is quickly opened, exposing the missile to the water above. Pressurized gas, typically stored in tanks within the submarine, is then used to eject the missile from the tube and through the water's surface. Once the missile breaches the water's surface, its rocket motor ignites, propelling it into the air where it can continue its flight 
toward its target. The other launch system utilizes the same forward-facing tubes reserved for torpedoes. Warning, what must be restrained at all times and warning! In fact, the only real difference between traditional missiles and torpedoes is the mode of propulsion. The crew will select the appropriate type of weapon from the submarine's inventory based on the target's type, size, speed, and range. In order to launch a projectile from a torpedo tube, the submarine must first prepare the tube by flooding it with water to equalize the pressure inside with that of the outside. Once the target is acquired, the captain will order the team to fire and, depending on various factors, send the weapon through the water or air. Both modern missiles and torpedoes are equipped with sophisticated guidance systems, which may include sonar and wire-guided options. Upon reaching the target, the weapon can either impact the target directly or detonate its warhead near the target, depending on its type and mission objectives. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.